dear students today we will be discussing about uh, different types of fuel cell technologies and its performance comparison so primary fuel cells are phosphoric acid fuel cells alkaline fuel cells polymer electrolytic membrane fuel cells sometimes it is called uh, proton exchange membrane fuel cells molten uh, carbonate fuel cell then solid oxide fuel cells we will discuss one by one for phosphoric acid fuel cells which was discovered in 1980s here in this configurations we have to have two electrodes positive electrodes and negative electrodes and we need electrolyte so here in this case electrolyte is concentrated phosphoric acid which is filled between these two electrodes and in this case pure hydrogen or hydrogen rich gas is supplied at the negative electrode that is anode and oxygen or air is supplied in the positive electrode or cathode for this fuel cells the operating temperature is in the range of 150 to 200 degrees celsius and at atmospheric pressure it produces an ideal emf of 1.23 volt at 25 degrees c let us discuss the working of this fuel cell so as i said before this fuel cell has two electrodes this is negative electrode called anode and this is positive electrode called cathode and gas is supplied to this negative electrode as soon as this gas comes and come contacts with this electrode then what happens this hydrogen splits so is something like this hydrogen shall you know converted to hydrogen ion and equal amount of electron is generated okay this electron moves through this external circuit then we can connect some loads and we can see the light generation or working of the device which is installed as load and then it comes to the positive electrode which is cathode right so when it comes here then what kind of reaction takes place so this half of oxygen reacts with this electron and this hydrogen ion which is traveled through this electrolytes okay here electrolyte is phosphoric acid phosphoric acid right so i can write here and then what we will have here is h2o right and if we are interested about overall reaction it will be something like h2 plus half of O2, so it will be H2O. This is the overall reactions, right? But normally at rated value of current, the voltage lies between 0.7 volt to 0 0.8 volt. This is to be noted, okay? One thing we must notice here in this electrode, porosity is maintained okay so i am representing this in dots so why this pores are present because this pores in this electrodes provides an opportunity for the gas the gas is coming here and the electrolyte in the other side okay and the electrode to come in contact for electrochemical reaction of course, this efficiency depends on the kind of catalyst used. Okay? So, normally platinum is used as catalyst, but platinum is quite costly. So, alternative materials are in SARS, people have developed some alternative material to act as 
catalyst. And also one thing we must know, so here this electrode material is uh, we have for anode it is nickel and for cathode it is silver, silver okay? because these are less costlier material available to act as electrode material. So, let us move to the other fuel cell which is alkaline fuel cell. So, it is the oldest type of fuel cell and the first alkaline fuel cell was built by Francis Thomas Bacon in 1939. It was first used by USA to produce electrical energy and water on board spacecraft and it uses about 40 percent aqueous KOH potassium hydroxide as electrolyte. And the cell operating temperature is about 90 in this case. But one thing we must be careful about the operation of this alkaline fuel cell, this it is carbon dioxide. So, this fuel what is to be used for this application must be free from carbon dioxide as it combines with KOH electrolyte to form K2CO3 potassium carbonate which is not good and it decreases the output of the fuel cell as it increases the electrical resistance. So, I would like to draw the working of this system. So, it is something like I can draw here. So, it is like I will draw these things. This is something like this. Here, I am drawing this. This is like our this is electrode and this is negative electrode negative this is positive this is anode and this is cathode ok. And here is the fuel inlet it may be hydrogen or hydrogen rich gas or hydrogen rich gas. In this case we can use hydrazine as well and to H4 as I said before this hydrazine we do not have to transform to hydrogen in order to use in fuel cells directly you can use this in the fuel cell system and we can you know, produce electricity. And here is oxygen. Sometimes we can use hydrogen peroxide and then we have to go through some kind of chemical process and from that we can extract you know, oxygen or we can separate oxygen from air. And this is the spent oxidant. And this is spent fuel. Okay. So, in this case, what happens? Let me draw this part first. So, this is the load part. Okay. So, this electron will come from this, it is electron flow. Electron flow will take place like this and will come here. So, in this case if I have to know uh, write this equation first say for example, at positive electrode here the oxygen water. So, this oxygen half of oxygen plus water this water is present in the aqueous solution that is 40 percent aqueous KOH, 
equals KOH. Okay. So, this water is coming from this electrolyte. So, that is how in the cathode we will have this electrochemical reaction half of oxygen plus H2O and we will have electron as well. So, electron will flow from here. So, it will be something like 2 OH negative. Okay. Then this OH minus or ions migrate from positive to negative electrode through electrolyte. So, this will come from here to here. Okay. So, this will be something like hydrogen is here and I can say this is your hydrogen maybe and OH is coming from here. Okay. This is OH minus and of course, this is 2 and then it will produce equal number of electron this is 2 E minus right and then it is come back because it is positive. So, it will be 2 E minus and it is coming and here is the oxygen and this OH is going from here okay, which flows through this electrolyte. Okay. And here I can keep one channel for electrolyte cooling to coolant. Okay. And finally, what we will have is our electricity in water. So, if we have to write the expression or electrochemical reaction at the anode, then it will be something like this. Okay. And its overall reactions will be hydrogen plus half of oxygen. So, it will be something like H2O. Okay. Now, in one case, if we consider say hydrazine is used in this uh, fuel cell, then how this reaction will take place? So, let us learn it. Here, hydrazine is N2 H4, and if we consider this is supplied, and of course, this uh, hydrazine is supplied because it is a fuel, this is supplied to the negative electrode okay and if we are interested about the reaction at the negative electrode then it will be n to h4 plus 4 oh ion then it will be something like n2 plus 4 h2o plus equal amount of electron right and at the positive electrode, this is the negative electrode and what I am writing this is for positive electrode. It will be something like oxygen plus 2 H 2 O and 4 electron. So, it will give you 4 OH ion okay. and its overall reaction will be something like the overall reaction overall reaction is something like N 2 H 4 plus oxygen. So, it will give you nitrogen plus 2 H 2 Okay. So, this is how we can use different fuels in uh, fuel cells to produce electricity. Right. So, I am uh, reiterating this uh, concept how it happens once again. So, we have two electrodes 
negative electrode is anode, positive electrode is cathode. Okay. So, fuel is supplied here at the anode side and oxidant is supplied in the cathode side. right? And what happens here this oxygen reacts with water which is present in the aqueous solution it produces OH ion which travels through this electrolyte and comes to the negative electrode. And here in a negative electrode this hydrogen reacts with OH ion and it gives water and electron and this electron again travels back to the positive electrode which is cathode right that is how we have these two electrochemical equations first equation happens at the positive electrode and second equation happens at the negative electrode and this is nothing but the overall electrochemical reaction takes place in this fuel cell. Now, in one case what I have shown here we have used different fuels in the same fuel cell like hydrazine. So, what happens this hydrazine is supplied to the anode and it reacts with hydrogen ion at the negative electrode and it generates nitrogen and water vapor. Of course, electron will be generated and this will travel back to the positive electrode and this electron and water which is present in the electrolyte and oxygen reacts and produces OH ion. And if we are interested about overall reactions, this hydrogen reacts with oxygen, it will give nitrogen and water. Okay? So, now we will move to the other categories of fuel cell. So, this third category is polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cells. Sometimes we call it as proton exchange membrane fuel cell. So, here the difference is we have to use some kind of solid membrane of organic material. It is like polystyrene sulfonic acid. So, this electrolyte it is membrane, membrane electrolyte is very very you know, important to transfer the protons from negative electrode to the positive electrode. Right? The high ionic conductivity non permeable to reactant gases, low degree of electro osmosis, high resistance to dehydration, high resistance to oxidation or hydrolysis and high mechanical stability are desirable properties of this membrane. Okay? And its membrane is of about 0 0.076 centimeter thick. So, it is a very thin layer and it is a finely divided platinum serves as electrochemical catalyst and current collector in this fuel cell. And this cell operates between 40 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. And the ideal EMF produced is about 1.23 at 25 degree Celsius. So, now let us learn its actual working and the kind of electrochemical reaction takes place. So, it is something like this. this is one electrode, this is electrolyte, this is an electrode. This is PEM, fuel cell. So, here is the fuel or hydrogen, here is the oxygen okay. and uh, let points here, this is hydrogen 
and uh, it will liberate electron and then this electron will come back here. here this is negative electrode so negative electrode and this is positive electrode and uh, load is connected in between uh, electron flow will be here and this is somewhat like something like this this is the membrane this is called ion axons and since membrane axons membrane and this is negative electrode this is positive electrode and oxygen supply is here and here we can collect water because here this is hydrogen ion will travel through this ion exchange membrane and here oxygen this half of oxygen will participate and water will come out. Okay. So, as explained before only difference is we have ion exchange membrane instead of uh, other fluid. So, here is the this is our negative electrode and this is the positive electrode. Okay. So, hydrogen supply is here right. So, at this uh, negative electrode or anode I can say at anode will have the reaction something like hydrogen actually no transforms to hydrogen ion and equal amount of electron and in cathode what will happen this oxygen and this hydrogen ion plus this electron oh, it transforms to water. Okay. So, these two electrochemical reaction will take place and if we are interested about uh, overall overall reaction then it will be something like hydrogen reacts with oxygen it will be something like H 2 O. Okay. So, this is how it works only difference is the membrane. Okay. Let us move to direct methanol fuel cell. We can reform methanol or we can use it directly for fuel cell application. So, uh, this was developed in 1990s and we can use methanol directly in the fuel cell and it is uh, achievable efficiency is something like 30 to 40 percent and its operating temperature range is 50 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius. And mostly these fuel cells are used in mid size applications such as cell phones, digital cameras, laptops and few other consumer products. So, here what kind of reaction takes place? So, configuration is same as what we have discussed in case of PEM fuel cell. So, for anode reaction it will be something like methanol is CH3OH reacts with water it will produce carbon dioxide plus 6 hydrogen and then equal amount of electron. Okay. In cathode side cathode reaction we will have oxygen balance equation reacts with this hydrogen because hydrogen will travel through the membrane and also electron will come through the external circuit then what we will have is 3 H 2 O right and overall overall cell reaction will be cell reaction will be something like methanol C H 3 O H 
plus 3 to oxygen and then what we will have is carbon dioxide plus H 2 O this is H 2 O then we have 4 this is 2 yes yeah it is fine this is the overall reaction right. So, now let us move to other fuel cell say molten carbonate fuel cell in shorts we call it at MCFC this carbonate of alkali metals like sodium, potassium or maybe lithium is molten phase is used as electrolyte here and its operating temperature ranges from 600 degree Celsius to 700 degree Celsius and its theoretical EMF is approximately 1 volt at 700 degree Celsius. A special feature of this cell is that the during operation they oxidize hydrogen to water and carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. And here in this case the discharge what is coming out from the fuel cell is steam. Also we get carbon dioxide and nitrogen if the temperature is exceeding 540 degree Celsius. So, what kind of reaction takes place we can write I will be more interested about this overall reaction. So, it will be something like hydrogen plus carbon monoxide plus oxygen which will give you H 2 O plus carbon dioxide. Okay. So, there are interesting issues. So, if we are supplying this fuel to the molten carbonate fuel cells then from where we are getting this hydrogen and carbon monoxide there are different routes. So, uh, reforming is the process by which this can be produced or else say for example, we have some resources right and some known technologies say biomass we have biomass ok. So, what we can do we can have gasifier system we can have gasifier system ok. There what happens we can produce producer gas it is a mixture of methane carbon monoxide hydrogen ok nitrogen will be there okay, if air is used and of course, carbon dioxide is there ok. So, once we generate this gas we need to purify purify and after purifications we can devise a mechanism to extract only hydrogen and carbon monoxide ok. So, once we have done this then this fuel is ready for application in fuel cells for generation of electricity right. So, that is how I said there are two component of fuel we can use in fuel cell applications. So, one is direct other one is indirect ok. So, if we want this hydrogen and carbon monoxide then we have to go for this indirect process first we have to use this gasification technology or maybe reforming then we can produce you no know, hydrogen and carbon monoxide then we can use it in the molten carbonate fuel cell for generation of electricity. Then what is next is solid oxide fuel cells in sorts we call it as SOFC. So, in this case certain solid oxides such as zirconium oxide or maybe ceramics at high temperature can be used as electrolyte and in this case this negative electrode is made of porous nickel and positive electrode employs metal oxide like indium oxide and its temperature range is really very very high operating temperature range goes from 600 degree Celsius to 1000 degree Celsius. Since the operation is very high hence no catalyst is required in this fuel cell. 
and this output EMF is calculated to be about 0.63 volt. So, I am again interested to write the electrochemical equations like at at negative electrode negative electrode we have hydrogen reacts with oxygen then it gives H2O plus 2 electron and for carbon monoxide this is for hydrogen because we have used carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So, CO plus oxygen ion it gives carbon dioxide plus 2 electron and at positive electrode we have oxygen which react to it 4 electron because both the electrochemical reactions need to be considered 2 plus 2 4 electrons then what we will have to oxygen ok. And if we are interested about overall reaction the overall reaction will be something like hydrogen plus carbon monoxide plus oxygen in the reactant side and the product side what we will get is H 2 O plus carbon dioxide. And this is the overall reaction for a solid oxide fuel cells. Now, see in the next slides we are going to see what output we are getting and what fuel we are using. Okay. Say for example, if we consider proton exchange membrane normally we use hydrogen as fuel and uh, oxygen as you no know, oxidant and output is water vapor. For solid oxide fuel cells we may use hydrogen or maybe natural gas, biogas and carbon monoxide. So, that is how this is quite uh, you know, uh, interesting uh, fuel cell where renewable energy directly applied for generation of electricity and oxidant we can use oxygen from air and what output we are getting of course we are getting electricity but at the exit the exhaust side what are things we are getting if hydrogen is used output is typically water vapor and if methane or propane is used the output is combination of water vapor and carbon dioxide. For alkaline fuel cells, we can use hydrogen in the negative electrode and oxygen in the positive electrode then expected outcome that is exit will be water vapor. For phosphoric acid fuel cells, we use hydrogen and oxygen and we get water vapor and carbon dioxide at the exit. And MCFC like molten carbonate fuel cells, we can use hydrogen, carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons like methane in the negative electrode and in the positive electrode we can use mixture of carbon dioxide and oxygen or air. So, if hydrogen is used then output is water vapor, if carbon monoxide is used then water vapor and carbon dioxide will get at the exit and if natural gas or biogas is used then output is combination of water vapor and carbon dioxide. For direct methanol fuel cell we can use liquid methanol as fuel and air or oxygen as oxidizer. So, what is expected at the exit is water vapor and carbon dioxide. Let us move ahead and see more comparison on all those fuel cells in terms of operating temperatures, efficiency and lifetime. 
So, proton exchange membrane operating temperature is 40 to 60 degrees Celsius, fuel is hydrogen and you see efficiency is 48 to 58 percentage. A life will, so can be seen here about 2000 to 3000 hour. Alkaline fuel cells operating temperature is 90 degrees Celsius, fuel is hydrogen and its efficiency is about 64 percentage. Lifetime is also quite high like 5000 to 10000. And phosphoric acid fuel cells we have 150 to 200 degrees Celsius is the operating temperature and fuel normally use hydrogen and efficiency is about 42 percent and cycle life is uh, or lifetime is more than 50,000 hour. Molten carbonate fuel cell operating temperature is considerably higher it is about uh, 600 to 700 degrees Celsius and uh, we can use hydrogen and carbon monoxide as fuel and efficiency may reach up to 50 percentage and its lifetime varies from 7000 to 8000 hours. And for solid oxide fuel cells its operating temperature can go near to 1000 degrees Celsius from 600 degrees Celsius and we can use hydrogen and carbon monoxide as fuel and its efficiency is really very very good. We can get an efficiency up to 65 percent and life is somewhat lower it is about 1000 hour. So, it is the lowest compared to the all kind of fuel cells, but it is quite good because we do not have to use any catalyst that way it will bring down the cost. At the same time we can use the renewable resources for electricity generation straight away by using this SOFC. Again I am coming back to fuels for fuel cells. So, as you know we said we have direct and indirect fuels like hydrogen, hydrazine these are like direct fuels like ammonia, hydrocarbon gas it may be liquid synthesis gas. So, we have to process it to get the appropriate fuel to be used as fuel for fuel cells. Okay. So, uh, in this uh, condition we can think about something like say uh, synthesis gas if we say it is a uh, we need to go for uh, uh, water gas safe reactions to get something like uh, if we have say carbon monoxide plus H2O somewhere and uh, if we maintain a condition something like 400 degrees C and um, uh, it is a high pressure it is a high pressure about uh, say 27 bar and uh, maybe we can use some kind of uh, catalyst catalyst then what we will get is carbon dioxide plus H2 and then some kind of heat maybe 1440 kilojoule per kg. So, what I am saying here we are using synthesis gas syn gas and uh, oh, since carbon monoxide is not uh, good for the process. So, we have to promote this uh, reaction to convert this carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide then we will have hydrogen. Okay. So, that way for uh, no hydrocarbons say light hydrocarbons like naphtha first we need to do steam reforming and then we can produce uh, no hydrogen and carbon monoxide and then this can be used as fuel for uh, fuel cells. Now, let us solve one uh, interesting problem like with a given desired say for example, the desired output of a system is 2 megawatt DC and the operating condition of 600 millivolt and 400 milli ampere per centimeter square of a fuel cell. So, how much fuel cell area is needed? Assuming a cell area of 1 meter square per cell and 280 cells per stack, how many stacks are needed for this 2 megawatt unit? So, we can solve this problem very easily. So, its uh, solution goes something like this we know we know P 
is equal to V into I that is voltage multiplied by current P is for power. Okay? So, power will be in watt. So, if I am interested to find out current then it will be P by V. Right? So, what is P here? is 2 megawatt. Okay? So, 2 into 10 to the power of 6 this is watt and what is the voltage? It is 600 millivolt that means 600 multiplied by minus 3. Okay? So, this will be something like we have watt per volt. Okay? Fine. So, if we simplify it, so it will be something like again this watt is nothing but no voltage into ampere, right. Okay. So, if we simplify it, what we will get is about 3, 3, 3, 3 kilo ampere is the current. Okay. So, again we have the data like each individual cell will operate at 400 milliampere per centimeter square. So, we can calculate the total area required, the total area required is something like you know area is equal to current divided by current density, current density. Okay. So, current is about 3, 3, 3, 3 kilo ampere, this is kilo ampere and then we will have current density is 400 milliampere. So, it is milliampere that means 10 to the power of minus 3 ampere. Okay? So, if we do the calculation, okay, this is ampere per centimeter square, right? This is centimeter square. So, it will be something like as per my calculation, it is 8.3325 into 10 to the power of 4 centimeter square. Okay. So, we can convert it to meter. So, if you convert it to meter, it will be 833.25 meter square. Okay. We can also calculate the number of cell required. Now, number of cells required, number of cells required it is something like 833.25 divided by 1 meter square parcel, 1 meter square parcel. Right? So, if we do this, then it will be something like 833.25 is the number of cell required. So, again what we can calculate is the stack required. So, how many stacks are needed for these 2 megawatt units? So, in order to solve this then what we need to do? Number of stacks, number of stacks will be, so it is number of cells 833, so it is roughly 833 you can say it is it's 833 divided by 280. So, it will be about 2.98, so which is equivalent to 3 stacks. Okay. So, here in order to produce 2 megawatt of power, we need to stack 833 cells into 3 stacks. Okay. So, that is how we can do the calculations. So, here first we have calculated the current and then we know the current density, so we use the current density to calculate the area. So, once we know the area, number of cells can be calculated because uh, one cell will uh, uh, occupy an area of 1 meter square. 
Okay. So, that is how we can do the calculation and finally, we can uh, calculate the number of stacks required because here 280 cells uh, per squares are suggested. So, if we use that uh, data, then uh, it will be about uh, 3 stacks are required to uh, provide an output of 3 megawatt DC. Okay. So, move on to the next slides. So, now we can summarize what we have uh, discussed today. Primarily, we have discussed uh, various uh, type of fuel cells and its working and comparison of performance of fuel cells. And also, we have tried to solve one problem to understand how to design a fuel cells. And of course, in the next class, we will be solving some numerical problems to strengthen your understanding on this aspect. So, thank you very much for viewing this video. Thank you.